Hello there guys and welcome to your Linux tutorial. In this Linux tutorial what we are going to talk about is background and foreground processes. Now there exists two kind of processes. Ones that execute in the background and ones that execute in the foreground. Background processes are useful for situations where the program is going to be running for a long time or you want to be able to use your terminal while the program is running. We have run all of our commands so far in the foreground, meaning we didn't get our terminal until the command stopped executing. All of the commands we have used so far have relatively short running time, so there was no need for running them in the background. Okay? So basically, you can think of the background as sort of this, I would say, uh, behind the scenes, quote unquote, uh, shell, which actually executes your program. Okay, and I am actually going to run a program in the background. I just have to navigate to it. I think it is in my downloads folder and it is called Mendeley, something like that. Okay, uh, let me see where I have to go, okay in the bin folder. And so basically, let's assume that I want to run this Mendeley desktop, that I want to run this uh, in the background. Okay, and what that means is that when I run it in the background, I will actually get my shell back. Because usually, let's say that I run LS as I just have, uh, I don't get my shell terminal, uh, I don't get my uh, terminal uh, back, I don't get my shell prompt back, until the command stops set executing. However, if I wanted to run this program in the background, meaning I run the program and I can use the shell, uh, then I can run a program in the background. Then just as a side note, I never really ran anything in the background, but again, it is useful if something is going to take a very long time to execute and you want your shell back. And it's especially useful if, for example, you are connected remotely to a computer and you know something is going to take a long time, then you can start it in the background and it can run in the background and then you can use the same shell se uh, shell uh, uh, session uh, basically to um, uh, do other stuff on the computer. Okay, well, obviously you could, uh, if you're connecting to a remote computer, you could you could open up multiple shell sessions. So that that's also an option, but um, you know, in this particular use case, when you'll have one shell session that could be a viable option to run long running stuff in the background, okay? So how would I run this in the background? I would write dot slash, dot forward slash, then I would write Mendeley desktop, and then I would write the ampersand sign. And basically when I press enter here, I will actually uh, say to the shell, okay, I want you to run Mendeley desktop, but I want you to run it in the background. Okay, so when I press enter, I actually get, uh, I think I mistyped it, I apologize. So let me just see, uh, Mendeley, M N, D E, ah, ah, yeah, I'm missing, uh, missing an E here, okay? So let me just go ahead right here. Someone's calling me on the phone. I'm not gonna respond on the phone when I'm recording a video, okay? So let me just uh, let me just put it here, okay? And press enter. And basically, uh, you can see that uh, my Mendeley desktop started. Now, the thing which may confuse you is I have this output. Well, basically, the output is still outputted on my screen if I don't explicitly uh, say that I want to redirect my output, which is what we covered in input uh, input output redirection. And what may surprise you is that I can actually use my shell. Okay, so I can use my shell, I can do whatever I want to do, you know, change my directory or whatever, but I still have Mendeley right here. Okay, so I can still use my program even though I ran it in in this shell and as you can see, I can still use this shell even though I ran this program, okay? So this is why running programs in the background is useful. But again, as I said midway through this tutorial, I never really used it because almost all of my commands are executed almost instantly. But again, if you do have a long running command, it is useful to, uh, to run it in the background, okay? And we are going to discuss, we are going to discuss uh, 
other stuff, uh, for example, how to kill the program, right? Because right now, if I just want to exit manually, I can just press X right here. But if I wanted to kill it without pressing X, without having access to, to graphical user interface, how will I do it? Well, you will learn that in the next tutorial. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you very soon.